The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome to the April 4th. It's April 4th or 5th. Hold on a second here. Steve, you should know this. It's the April 4th edition of today's Trader Z show. So welcome to it. I'm uh, your guest. I'm, a, I'm your guest host. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. That's the number to call in on. If you can't call in, but you've got a question, go ahead and send me an email. Rifle that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of red out there. That sea of red is all the U.S. indices. Dow's off 169, S&P 17, NASDAQ's down 21, Russell's off 34, Semi's 31, Tranny's down 187. You've got gold up 37 bucks, trading out of 2037. You've got light sweet crude is up eight cents. You've got uh, silver up a buck. That's a four percent move there, trading out of 2508. Natural gas is uh, basically flat. 30 year treasuries up uh, nearly one full point at 132.28. Eight. So let's go figure out what all this means out here. What are we watching for today? Well, the first thing we're watching today is really going to be uh, for the candle formation on the daily time frame charts. Why is that important? Well, in the case of the ES Mini, price has attained its one-to-one -one price projection. The one-to-one -one price projection here, I'll just draw in the A to B like. We'll just simply move that over to the C point. You'll see that price has hit it. It's you know, missed it by maybe a, a quarter tick out there. So you've got to confirm. Uh, you've got to confirm it. You have an A to B equals CD pattern that has completed the one to one move out there. Now, in order for this to give us a sell the D point or Gartley sell pattern, we need to see at days and a bearish reversal candle. We're, we're off to a pretty good start um, out here, so it just depends on day's end. We've got the same issue with regard to the NQ, your upper right hand chart out there. Now, there, we don't have the A to B equals CD pattern. Instead, what we have is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that has been triggered. If we get a bearish reversal candle there, that would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, both of those, the ES and the NQ, are well above support. Right now, the first level of support for both of them is the oscillator and change line. 40.55 or so in the ES mini and 13.064 for the NQ. The Dow also has an a, a uh, has achieved the one to two A to B equals C D price projection level. It is also waiting for a bearish reversal candle to then confirm that we should see a further move lower. Now that further move lower should take us to about the 32,798 area. In the case of the Russell 2000, she is just consolidating with inside its profiles. So that's between 1723 basically and 1826 out there. So there's just a consolidation. Now today's price movement is expected expected is anticipated we we took a look at this yesterday why is it expected and anticipated the reason is because as we discussed the market has the overall market has attained an overbought status when you get to that overbought status it has to be worked off there's a number of different ways it can be worked off. We're going to turn to the New York Stock Exchange. We're going to use that advanced decline oscillator. That, again, is the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. 
So that's what that represents. The key areas to be watching uh, with regard to that tool are the plus 150 and minus 150. Those are going to be the threshold areas where you get into overbought or oversold. Yes, something can remain overbought for a, a long time and things can remain oversold for a period of time out there. But right now you can see we're now back down below the 150 level. So it is working off that condition. Working off that condition. If we take a look at, let's go do take a look at this right now. Let's stay on the same uh, panel out here, but let's take a look at market breadth. Uh, let's look at market breadth for the S&P 500 first. So you got the S&P 500 trading out of the ES Mini trading out of 41.32. Got a decent pullback going on. Yet when we take a look at the market breadth speed dials out here, this is for the S&P 500, we are bullish right now. For the 60, the 240, the daily and the weekly. Remember, yesterday, at least, I believe, we had a negative crossover on the weekly. So this, quite frankly, is setting up just a buy the dip at some point here. Now, it might take a couple days just simply to work off that overbought condition. But right now, conditions are very bullish for the S&P 500. And the S&P 500, quite frankly, has been the one that's been the uh, struggle out here. Right now, on a uh, weekly time frame, you have 120 in instruments trading above the top of the weekly profile, 83 below. That is a bullish outcome, especially where we were at yesterday. On the daily time frame, we're 241 above, 54 below. If we take a look at a four-hour time frame, we're 212 above, 129 below. And lastly, on the hourly time frame, we are uh, 190 above, 183 below. So there we're getting somewhat close, but still in bullish character. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, now the NASDAQ 100, the NQ, has been bullish for all of its time frames. And now it's just slightly slipped into the red zone. And that's for its 60-minute time frame. On a 60-minute, you've got 31 above, 42 below. And on a four-hour time frame, we have... Uh, 38 above, 39 below. So we're pretty much at a draw right there. But the daily and the weekly are very, very bullish for the NDX100, the NQ out there. Uh, any news lead to the pop in gold? Yes, the U.S. dollar index is uh, trading uh, below support out there. Uh, Peter from uh, Park City, and uh, that is certainly putting some energy into uh, Goldilocks, let alone you have to assume that the arraignment that's going on in New York City isn't adding to the cause of uh, trust with regard to, uh, let's just say, our, our governments out there. And that always leads to higher price in metals. And that, quite frankly, might be where we're at. Uh, these days. And so, uh, you know, between all the stuff going on, sending more things over to Taiwan, all this stuff is creating that type of uncertainty where there is a lack of trust in uh, government institutions. And that's what always pushes uh, metals uh, higher. So, uh, or that's certainly one of the things that can do it. But right now, I've got the US dollar index that is trading much lower. So, uh, with regard to the, so we're in this overbought status, or we had been. It's working that condition off. We still have very positive market breadth uh, inside the system. We have uh, price trading above profile levels with regard to the ES, the NQ, and the Dow, the Russell 2000, just in a world on its own out there. And we do have that spot follow Tunex that is trading higher but still well below the 50-day exponential moving average. That's on your left-hand bottom panel out there, the 50-day. Right now, printing out at 2109. You've got the spot volatility trading out at 19. 53. So give us a call, folks, at 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Please put a radio show question if you do send me an email. And of course, inside our Tigers Den, well, any and every ping will do. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I think the only question we've got in here is from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Who wants me to take a look at the TQQQ. We just take a quick peek here. Yeah, I believe that's the only question that we've got going at this uh, moment. So as we take a look, at, and specifically Dan was asking about, I believe it was a 60-minute time frame chart. Is that correct, Dan? So as we take a look at it, here's a 60-minute time frame chart that we'll put up. Its oscillator and change line is up at the 2815 level. What we have out here is you can see a TD9 count top. You now have a uh, confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Uh, the reason that you do is you've got this key reversal bar. That bar prior to it, uh, the, both the low and the high, was exceeded. And we had one tick in the opposite direction. So as long as price remains under 28.15, Dan, it should either uh, retarget the lows of the morning down at about the 27.33 area or it could get all the way down into these potential support levels. So on a 60-minute time frame, you have potential battles at 27.08, 26.93, 26.78, and 26.75. So those are your battles to the downside to the extent that you're paying attention to the TQQQ chart and what it is communicating uh, to us out there. So I do hope that that helps you out, and uh, thanks much for the request out here. With regard to the TQQQ itself, uh, very similar, you know, in what we're taking a look. We, again, you want to get your – you want, really want to get your signals from the NQ – Let's take a look at the QQQ series out here. But what this does show us is much like we took a look at the NQ. It is in an extended condition with a price moving higher with less relative energy. But that's not a top. That's not a top. It's only a top when we get that bearish reversal candle out there. So that's what you'd be looking for inside the TQQQ. The weekly chart looks very strong and bullish. In fact, it has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. A confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside for its weekly time frame. So uh, TQQ, again, it looks like we're just getting a little bit of a uh, pullback out here, which we expect because of those overbought conditions, um, at least at this stage of the uh, game. Let's go move and take a look at the GDX out here. The GDX is confirming or appears to be confirming a weekly A to B equals CD to the upside. Now it's only Tuesday, so we can't – whoops, I wanted to go back to the black charts. Give me a moment here. Um, screens there we go so here we've got the uh, daily weekly and monthly charts here for the gdx so first the gdx if it closes above 33.34 today so that's the key level now on friday it'll be a close above 33.34 that will also be the key level but as we speak on a daily basis as long as price closes above that you already have the volume 
to take out that B point. That B point had volume on January 25th of 21 million shares. We are at 16.4 million shares with slightly less than two hours of trading. This has got the volume. The one to one confirmed A to B equals C D would take us up to 38.41. However, notice the C to D leg on this uh, uh, on this A to B equals C D pattern. It is on the strong side. The retracement was only 57 percent, so below 0.618, not by much. So here on the strong side, this says should this momentum continue, this will do more than a one to one A to B equals C D. The upside instead would likely target 41.62. Now on a weekly basis, only Tuesday, but the volume on that swing point is 104 million. We're already at nearly. 50 million and we're not even full two days worth of trading out there so uh um uh, so uh, uh yeah so but the key will be on friday will be where is the close in the gdx so if you're long the gdx you most certainly want to see a close above 33 34 now even if it doesn't that doesn't mean that you won't at least be back up there to try to test but right now uh everything is looking pretty good but watch 33 40 33 34 Right now, price is printed out at 33.94 out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the uh, GDX. John wants to take a look at the XLF. So let's punch up the XLF on these black background charts. I'll do the same on uh, the white background charts here momentarily. And so with regard to the XLF, the XLF has got this gigantic A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside out here. And price right now is trading. So I'm going to get rid of that pattern. So we already know that that exists out here. What we want to do is take a look at profile. So what price was able to do was able to get it was able to get back inside its profile. Now, the bottom of this profile is at 3185. We're trading right now at 3188. You want to watch that. If price closes below that level out there, then we're likely going to make a run for the low that took place on March 24th. Now, what you don't see on this screen here is that this formed a road momentum indicator bottom. And it did that when the bullish reversal candle, which was this gap to the upside, this is the trading session of March 27th, unfolded out there. So you do have, inside the financials, you do have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, if price closes below, in fact, I'm going to switch the uh, charts here because you'll be able to more clearly see where the support levels are. So let's just switch, flip back over to the white background charts. Give me just a moment. We'll pull those up here. And this will give us the price targets on a daily basis if price does close below the bottom of that profile. And that would then send us down to the 3132 level. If price were to close below 3132, then what we'd be looking at is a move most certainly back to that swing low from March the 24th. So what you should know, uh, John C., with regard to the XLF, is on a daily time frame, you have a confirmed bottom. And now you have price just pulling back to test support. So you most certainly want to watch that area. And if price closes below that support level, it goes to its next area of support at 31.32. Otherwise, if support here holds, price wants to move higher. Now, the weekly time frame chart is forming a new profile or has formed a new profile. It is attempting to form a new profile. And 31.06 is a level of support here. So on the 31.32 area, that red oscillator and change line for its daily, time frame if price were to close below that john what you'd be looking at is 3106 resistance this is a bearish structured profile so what price got up to or close to was the center of that bearish structured profile 3241 and then the top of that profile is at 3308 now there is no bottom pattern let me just make sure of that on the weekly time frame yeah, there is no bottom pattern, and price is still trading inside its swing point. And this is probably the key out here. And that swing point I'm referring to was from October 14th. Now, the volume there was 273 million. Last week on its move higher, it was 250 million shares out there. If price can close back above that high, do it with less than 270, 273 million on a weekly basis, that would be a rejection of a swing point with lighter volume. Now, that swing high is 32.19. That's where you need to see a close above. So that's the weekly time frame for the uh, financial sector for the S&P 500. And inside the monthly time frame, just a consolidation with inside its profile as well. If we take a look at the uh, uh, Texas two-step uh, set of charts out here, we had two consecutive moves to the upside. Not unusual to now see it pull back out here. But this is key, John. We do have to watch those areas of support. We certainly want to watch volume out here. But right now, the XLF is doing what it should do, very much like the market, to work off that overbought condition. And uh, so you've got the XLF that's just simply participating as well, let alone, you know, we got all these problems with the uh, banks out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Thank you so very much for the request. And uh, let me just check the uh, iPhone out here, see if there's anybody else that may have sent a request via email. And the answer is uh, no. 
Oh, man. Nobody likes Steve. Oh, I take that back. We've got one right here. Uh, and Joe. Joe writes in and says, what's going on with natural gas today? Is it a buy? So that's a great question. Let's try to answer that question. We'll, we'll first populate uh, my larger set of time frame charts for natural gas. So uh, this will really help you to understand the uh, picture out here, Joe, when these are pulled up. So the first thing to know, and the charts are going to populate here, the very upper left-hand corner, once that chart, we're going to see that price last month closed below the February low, which was a bullish hammer candle. Chart's not up just yet. It's populating right now. That's a bearish message. So I'm going to leave you with that until we come back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Or give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're trying to answer a question for Joe, who wrote in and wants to know, is natural gas a buy today? So we're taking a look at those natural gas charts. So as I mentioned before we went to the break, what price did last month was a close below the bottom of a hammer candle. That hammer candle low out there, just so you have that. Uh, pro well, this is a continuous contract. I would, I would put up the... Uh, I'd put up the May contract, and but right now that low, let's assume it's at $2.25. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart here, Joe, this had a TD9 count bottom. That had a, uh, a key area of support at $2.26. Price closed below that last week. That negated that signal. What you see out here is we still have roads momentum indicator signals that are forming. 
What this requires is a, is a new bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. We had a chance yesterday for a hammer candle. That did not come to fruition. We had that same opportunity and chance on March 24th um, out there. So uh, the week of March 24th, that is. So last week. Uh, so what I would be waiting for on a weekly basis, so a longer term chart, if this is a, a bottom out here, I'd be waiting for that bullish reversal candle. And the reason is you've got that monthly to contend with, and that's suggesting lower price. Uh, the weekly is saying I don't have a bottom just yet. The daily did form a bottom last Friday. It did that when it formed this uh, bull sash candle. The reason why I say it formed a bottom last Friday, Joe, was because that was a confirmed roads momentum indicator pattern out there. You also have a new profile that is formed. So on this new profile, resistance, which really I would typically say is support, or let me just restate it. The bottom of the profile is $2.11, 2.113 to be exact. The center is the 2.19 and the top at 2.346. Price is trading below 2.113 as we speak. And uh, so it's below the bottom of that profile. It is below the red oscillator and change line. So even though we've got a bottom and if price closed below 2.074 today, that is the low of that bull sash candle out there. That'll negate that signal. So your question, is it a buy today? If you're a believer in only the daily time frame chart and you have price basically testing that threshold level, then you most certainly could take a long trade and then close it out at day's end. So, for example, boil UNG, if in fact price were to close below that 2.074 level. Not that it can't pop up the following day, but it would have violated the reasons that you would have gotten into the uh, trade out here. Now, when we take a look at the intraday charts out here, I'm not seeing a ton of uh, a ton of great signals out here to suggest that, in fact, as prices point back to these support levels that were there. Yeah, on a 240 minute chart, I see a road momentum indicator bottom pattern, but price has just been consolidating in the lower level of that profile area out here, consolidating the five hour time frame, doing that same thing out here. So uh, it just hasn't, and we're, we, are, we are in, Joe, the most favorable seasonal time period for natural gas. Here it is. We can put up this chart right now. As you can see, we've really been in that time period since about February 19th, but we know that, and, it, and this, if you look at, the, here is a 32 year chart, Joe, for natural gas. There's really only two months over 32 years where natural gas has a real positive outcome. And that's March. Well, we know that didn't come to fruition. And then April. Now, maybe it's just simply ignoring, well, we know that, not, not, not maybe, but we know it is ignoring the seasonal patterns out there. So if it's ignoring the seasonal patterns, I wouldn't want to use that as a reason to step into a, a trade out here. Instead, I'd be using the patterns that show up on our uh, screen. So I hope that that helps you out. If you've got any other questions, uh, please feel free to write back and I'll try to get that information for you. So basically, to answer your question, is it a buy? Absolutely. It has a buy pattern on the daily time frame. And you've got to make that decision as to how to best handle that potential trade out there. Next question coming in from HD. So let me get, uh, let me actually close out these charts here. A second. And uh, so just to take up the uh, hog, the uh, resources out here. And let's get back to my three panel set of charts out there. We don't have this set up, but we'll go ahead and type in uh, the energy sector, XLE. So let's type that up, XLE. So I do notice on the GDX, hold on one second here. So we're talking about the GDX, that breakout on a daily time frame. Today, I notice is going to be bar number eight. So we should see a short-term top in the GDX form between today and uh, Thursday out there. Um, it doesn't guarantee a top, but we're going to get a TD9 count. So that would typically lead to at least a short-term top. Now, we want to take a look at XLE. And as we take a look at XLE, uh, this is question reads, hello, Steve, would you look at XLE? Absolutely. Do you think it will fill the gap down to about 83 buckaroonies? So let's get the uh, let's get the uh, XLE out here. Let's try to understand what it's doing. So in the XLE, uh, what you have price doing, you had that nice uh, roads momentum indicator bottom pattern out here. We had price run all the way up into its TD9 count breakdown level of 86.15. And your question is, do I think it will fill the gap down at 83 bucks? Um, it really depends upon, I would say, more likely than not. It depends what light sweet crude wants to do. So you've got that TD, we've got that, we've got that competing uh, aspect going on, uh, HD, and. Uh, but right now, I would say, okay, do, so we don't have a topping pattern, right? Well, maybe maybe that's not the case. A topping pattern can just simply get him pattern out here. And I have lost my signal. 
I get back. That was weird. Uh, so uh, it does look like because that's up at resistance, I would answer your question like this. Yeah, it looks to me like it will get back to at least fill that gap. And the gap he's referring to would be down all the way up to all the way down to a level of 8297. So that's the first thing that HD is looking for. If we look at the weekly chart here for the energy sector, we can see that that gap higher yesterday also ran into resistance at its green oscillator and change line. So we got two levels of resistance that have held so far for the energy sector. And on a monthly basis, it actually be a close above 93.31. And when we see that, and we should see that, boy, that's going to just set off a, a gigantic move to the upside inside the energy sector out here. So we are up at enough resistance levels where this would suggest that, yes, pulling back to fill that gap. Now, let's look at a 30-minute time frame here for the energy sector, see what we have going on. And in this case here, I don't see much. I'm sure we could draw in A to B equals CD patterns that would be confirmed by these bearish engulfing candles. Okay, perfect. We don't have any kind of a bottoming signal. We have price trading below its green oscillator and change line. It means it's lost its momentum. And its next area of support, this is on a 30-minute time frame, is down between 82.96 and 83.42 out there. That would get you towards that 80. Well, that would really get you into that 83 uh, figure out there. So the 30-minute chart is saying, yeah, it's got that potential. But I really do think it will all be dependent upon what light sweet crude is doing so let's go take a look at the charts here for light sweet crude we've got to populate them here's our natural gas charts but let's go ahead and put those up on our screen we're still inside the ma contract out here what we know yesterday took place hd was in a case of light sweet crude it confirmed a td9 count top and so if that high gets taken out which it hasn't just yet. By the way, the TD9 count breakdown resistance level, this is on the daily time frame that we're looking at there, 8104. So this is really matching up with the energy sector that we just took a look at. In other words, it was doing the same thing. I think these charts are still popular, and that's why I've got this little delay that's going on. My apology for that. But here, if we pull this chart back, which we're going to try to do, okay, you can see how price jumped right up into that 8104 level. Now, we are not, in the case of Lightspeed Crude, we have traded above yesterday's high. We have not traded below yesterday's low. So I don't have a great signal here to say that that TD9 count top is, in fact, ready to start rolling over. If we look at a five-hour time frame chart, it was also a TD9 count top that had formed on that uh, thrust to the upside. That simply has led to a consolidation with inside its profile, which runs from 78.52 up to 81.69, with price right now testing that green oscillator and change line. So support is held. Even, so it's neutral on the five-hour time frame. I'm going to call it neutral on the daily time frame. The four-hour time frame is in the process of confirming a Rogeman indicator top. And uh, this could suggest a pullback to 76.15. So HD, it's also going to be about light sweep crude. So we've got to watch that out there as well. But it does look right right now. It's got a good chance of filling that gap inside the XLE. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Uh, all U.S. indices trading at downside. Dow's off 224, about 7 tenths, about 6 tenths for the S&P or 24. Quarter percent for the NASDAQ, that's 36. Two percent for the Russell, that's 36 points to the uh, downside. Let's go to our next question coming in from John Z. John writes in, he says, Procter & Gamble, ticker PG, if you could bring up your longer-term charts, do you see PG going to... 165 bucks. This is John in Milwaukee. Well, what we see out here, John, with regard to long-term charts, let me make sure I'm at the right page. I am. Uh, as on the monthly chart, you do have profile resistance at 152.08. So the answer to that question will be revealed to you by the stock gods. If price can close above 152.08 uh, on a monthly time frame, that is then going to suggest that, yeah, price can easily get up to your 165-ish area. That's that TD9 count top that you'd be looking at on a monthly time frame out there. So that TD9 count top, that actually uh, completed in January of 2022. Took a full year for price to pull all the way back to its breakout level of 131.94. Looked like it was going to be curtains in September of 2022, but it was saved the very following month out there. Now you just got that consolidation uh, with price now taken on that resistance level, which has been tested two different times. So what you know, John, is that that 152.08, and not right to that penny, but based on the closing price, is a very significant resistance area. Now, on a weekly time frame, if we take a look at what uh, Procter & Gamble is doing, it is currently back inside its weekly profile. We can see that Procter & Gamble was below the bottom of a weekly bullish structured profile for several months. Counter trend moves, if it's just, just a counter trend move, and this is really important, John Z, for you to be paying attention to, counter trend moves would typically end at the center of its bear, a bullish structured profile. Well, that's at 150.01. We're at 150.94. It is only Tuesday. So this is a Friday call, but you would love to see on Friday, you would love to see price close above 150.01. Now, the reason for that, John, is typically when you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, the buyers in that group, and the group we're talking about exists between 147.62 and 154.80, have the ability to push price up to test that resistance level at 154.80. So watch that level. Again, 150.01 is a key area. What happens if uh, price closes at 150.01 or below? Well, then that's telling us that this could just be a counter trend move. And then our answer to that question would be, no, I don't sense at this stage here, it's getting ready to get up to 165. Now to the daily time frame. The daily time frame today is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. When bar number eights are successfully completed, which it looks like will take place today, 90% of the time they go on to actually confirm or complete the pattern out there. So that says we should see a TD9 count top on a daily time frame. Can't get that to hold, can I? At uh, TD9 count top on a daily time frame between today and Thursday out there. So in the short term, and this is as price is attaining its TD9 count breakdown level, 152.13 out here. So let's try to summarize this for John. His specific question is, will price get to 165? The answer to that question comes from both the profile resistance on the monthly base at 152.08, 
150.01 for the weekly time frame and realizing that you also have a TD9 count pattern that's going to form between today and Thursday, which suggest, which which would suggest a retracement back to 146.84. So I think more likely than not, the answer to your question is that's going to be delayed out here, or at least that's what it appears to be at this moment in time. So thank you so very much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. Uh, and uh, folks, I would love to hear from you as well. Of course, we're getting toward of late in the show, so now would be the absolute best time to do that. We do have a request here from uh, Tim, and uh, Tim wants to uh, take a look at ticker symbol out here is uh, ALGM. So let's pull up ALGM. I don't know what ALGM is. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter with my charts. We're agnostic. But this is Allegro Microsystems, Inc. Traded out right now at about 46.80. We'll see that here as these uh, charts get populated. I still have a little bit of a delay that uh, is going on for whatever reason. But what we have is a confirmed Roadsman Dominicator top. That took place yesterday. So Tim's question is, Allegro Microsystems looks to be consolidating somewhat. Do you see a level for an entry point for a long position on the daily and weekly time frames? So yesterday was a key reversal bar with that Rosemintum indicator signal triggered out there. We also had already a confirmed Rosemintum indicator top from the high that took place on March 23rd. So you had really two of them. So now what price is likely to do is pull back to test support. And that support area out here, Tim, is going to be either... 4602 or 4547. Now, we just went through, I just went through that long dissertation with regard to when you're trading below a bullish structured profile. Now, this is trading above a bearish structured profile. So, your counter trend move to the downside for a potential entry on a daily time frame is between the level of 4547 and 4602. But if price were to close below 4547, and what you probably want to do is look at the volume and benchmark that against March 28th. The volume on March 28th was 1.27 million shares. You'd like to see volume pulling back with less than that and then hold 4547. If it closes below that, you either get back to test the swing point from March 28th or you get all the way back maybe to its breakout level of 43.28. On a weekly basis for ALGM, what do we have out here? We've got a, uh, we don't have a top. Well, we have a wave seven pattern that is present at this, but that needs a lower high and that can't take place until next month so we don't have a topping pattern as we speak right now this could by week's end form a roadsman to indicator top and the monthly chart hasn't traded long enough for us to get enough real great data on it so where are your entry points your weekly entry points would be around 44.85 your daily would be around 45.47 so that's what i'd be looking at if i were you tim i do hope that that helps oh on a 30 minute basis let's just see what do we have triggered here if anything uh, what we have on this 30-minute chart is Roadsman to Indicator Top. And if price were to close below 46.86, that's going to give you an A to B equals CD to the downside. Let's take a look at where that one-to-one -one price projection might get us to. So we'll draw in that A to B. We'll just simply move that over to the uh, C point out here and just give us gives ourselves an approximation. Well, that approximation is taking us right back to its breakout level for all intents and purposes. So 46.18 is likely going to be the target if we see a close below 46.86. So 46.18, where does that get us on the daily time frame chart up there? Gets us in that uh, zone. So then what that says is Tim, Watch the 30-minute time frame chart. We don't have that confirmed A to B equal CD just yet, but it's close. And then on here, what you'd be looking for for that potential entry is a confirmed by the D point, which really is a confirmed Gartley buy pattern on a 30-minute time frame. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in and have a terrific Tuesday out there. Let's take a look at the uh, next question. Well, the Jimmy was asking, Jimmy inside the Tiger's Den was asking about the seasonals. So let's do this here. And his question was, and I don't think it was necessarily about um, uh, necessarily about the uh, natural gas just itself, but just the seasonals in general. And he was basically asking the question, and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't have that exact thing up here, uh, uh, Jimmy, so my apology. But basically he's saying, based upon market conditions, rising interest rates, you know, quantitative easing that's been ending – uh, you know, just just the hullabaloo of everything that's going on. Interest rates is, is rising, uh, you know, inflation, just the, just the whole nine yards. Well, let's just take a look at the, let's just pull up the S&P 500 to the Dow. Let's pull up the, well, we're going to a breakout here. And I didn't even come close to answering Jimmy's question, did I? I'm going to get that in before we end this show. 
Steve Rogers with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, up, folks. So we're taking a look at the spy out here. We're going to answer Jimmy's question about the seasonal patterns. Uh, Mr. Bill asked about the roads momentum indicator and the spy monthly chart out here. So, Mr. Bill, on the monthly chart for the spy, what I have is a TD nine count top that form that completed in December of 2021 out there. So that's for the spy. Um, if we take a look at the uh, the last bottom that we got out here on the spy on a daily time frame uh, was on uh, March the 13th. And so I want to answer Jimmy's question here about seasonal patterns. If we take a look at the seasonal pattern, this is over the last 25 years for the S&P 500, that was projecting a bottom to form on March the 12th. So, you know, do the seasonal patterns work? I think you need to be aware of seasonal patterns. And what you do is you try to tie those in to uh, patterns that you're looking at on your stock charts out here. At this stage of the game, we know we're in the favorable seasonal cycle right now for the S&P 500. And that takes us into May the uh, second out here, where it starts to get in towards that unfavorable seasonal cycle. It takes us down into lows into October out here. What we also know inside the S&P 500 and the SPY today is we know that if a bearish reversal candle is to form, it will Will complete a sell the D point pattern. We know that markets are overbought. That condition needs to be worked off. So if we do get that bearish reversal candle, which is what we have as we speak right now, we should then see a pullback to support. 
And the support level inside the SPY, by the way, is at 404.77. And down below that is the green oscillator and change line, which recently changed color at 401.41. Typically, when a pattern completes and a bearish reversal candle would complete the pattern today, price will pull back and test that oscillator and change line. So I would say if we do get that bearish reversal candle, we will likely see the SPY move down to 401 .40. If it holds that level, that, that number is going to change, by the way. So just the oscillator and change line value, whatever it is at that moment in time. But if that holds, that's really the entry point into a long position for the S&P 500 or the spies out there. So, Jimmy, I hope that answered your question. Uh, I hope that answered your question as well, Mr. Bill. And I hope I answered everybody else's question and didn't confuse anybody. But if I do... All you have to do is write to me at steve at tfn.com, and I'll be happy to get back to you. So, folks, stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up. Think or Swim is up next. I'll be back tomorrow on wonderful Wednesday, 11 o'clock sharp. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there. And uh, not a bad basketball game last night. If you love UConn, take care, folks.